What's the impact of getting all this additional blood? Well, a lot of populations have real problems with iron deficiency. And there's certainly a, a real reason to believe that getting this additional blood may affect the iron stores of the baby. And a, a very large study was done uh, in Mexico City by uh, Camila Chaparro. It was a really nice study that was published not too long ago in The Lancet. And uh, it got a lot of mention. There was a number of letters to the editor. And they looked at 476 mother-infant pairs, uh, randomized them to immediately clamping them versus clamping them at two minutes. And they were delivered, they were maintained at the level of the uterus, and then they looked at measures, excuse me, of anemia and uh, residual iron stores. And they followed them out for six months, which is one of the real strengths of this study. So, first of all, we looked at the ferritins of the mothers. We don't want to find out that the delayed clamping mothers just had better iron stores. And they actually, out of just randomness, the delayed mothers had a little bit higher ferritins, but they weren't, it wasn't statistically significant. But they did have slightly higher ferritins. But notably, they weren't that iron deficient either. Our average was 131, 141, which is not iron deficient. But newborn hemoglobins were better in the delay group, which we knew about. Hematocrits are higher in the delay group, which we knew about from our data that was 40 years before this. And the incidence of clinical jaundice was about the same, statistically the same, 14% versus 17%. So they weren't able to see any difference in clinically significant jaundice. And now here's the results of this study. On the left, which I'm going to show you first, was the unadjusted analysis, which is not adjusted for the maternal factors. We see substantially different ferritins. In the early clamping group, we had an average ferritin of 34.9 versus 46.7. And when we look at ferritins less than 9, which is what they're the cutoff of significant iron deficiency, we found only 2% of the infants that had delayed clamping were significantly iron deficient, as opposed to 8% of the infants that had immediate cord clamping. And based on their definition of iron deficiency anemia, which was low ferritin plus low hemoglobin, none of the infants, even born to a population which is has a substantial number of iron deficient mothers, none of the infants that had delayed cord clamping had significant iron deficiency anemia versus 4% in the immediate clamping group. Interestingly, the amount of stored iron in the infants was substantially different as well. You had 32 milligrams versus 52 milligrams of iron stored in the infant, and total body iron also increased in the delayed group. Now this is important because the amount of iron that we see here, which is about 20 milligrams of stored iron, is about six months of iron use for that baby in producing blood, in producing neural tissue, and everything that that baby needs to use iron for. It's about six months of iron that we're getting just by delaying the cord clamping. And in an iron deficient population, that could be extremely important. In fact, our population is substantially iron deficient. And now we see the adjusted data, and this is just slided over, this is a wide chart, so it's just sort of slid over to the right. This is adjusted for the mother's ferritin and also the mother's employment, hoping to gather the mother's socioeconomic status. And we really see no difference. The ferritin is still 50% higher in delayed cord clamping babies, and the stored iron is still more than 50% higher in this adjusted group. Total body iron, again, substantially higher. Well, a little bit higher. Interestingly, they stratified it for babies that were greater than 3,000 grams and babies that were less than 3,000 grams, or between 2,500 and 3,000. And we saw a greater effect of delayed clamping in the babies that were smaller. And people worry about, OK, maybe I'll delay cord clamping in term neonates, but I'm not going to do it in really preterm neonates because we've got to get that baby to the ventilator. But at least from this point of view, these small babies actually benefit more from delayed cord clamping than the term babies. Babies that were given iron-fortified milk or iron-fortified formula, you notice at six months, this is at six months, we see less difference. But in babies that were not given iron-fortified milk or iron-fortified formula at six months,